One thing that I was thinking about earlier this morning is that I just really don't like paying bills. I pay them, uh, of course, but I just don't like it. Uh, and I got reminded of that because I have a couple of different things that come out automatically every single month. And the thing about bills is that I don't I mean, I really don't like I don't know anybody that likes paying bills, uh, but it's something that we have to do, because if you don't pay your bills, then you won't have a car. If you don't pay your bills, you will not have a cell phone. If you don't pay your bills, you won't have electricity. You won't have heat. You won't have this and that because you have to pay those bills. Um, so that would make the bills a requirement, something that has to happen in order for other things to work. Uh, in Geno Stone's case, him signing his ex exclusive rights free agent tender, that was a requirement in order for him to be able to work. Uh, the reason I say that um, is because he is an exclusive rights free agent. So that means the Ravens have exclusive rights even though i don't really like that term when it comes to football players and stuff but anyway they have exclusive rights to geno stone as a player so he would either sign that tender or he wouldn't be able to play at all um and i'm sure he got no problem signing it had no problem signing or whatever so the ravens they officially re-signed Geno Stone. He signs his tender. It, it is a, a match made in Baltimore. And of course, y'all know the story. The Ravens, a couple years back, they drafted Geno Stone. Then the same year they drafted him, they cut Geno Stone. Geno Stone went to the Houston Texans. He was like, oh my goodness, what's going on over here? Big yikes. Then he came back the following year and re-signed with the Ravens. And that's been that ever since. Um, and I do believe that with Geno Stone, I'm pretty sure he was the last person that ever. And this is not going to change because, you know, he ain't coming out of retirement. I mean, people were waiting for him to go into retirement, but he is the last person ever to catch an interception from one Ben Roethlisberger. So that is a record that will never be broken, that will never be changed because Big Ben, he ain't playing no more. Trust me. Um, so shout out to Geno Stone. Uh, but he's one of those cases where with the Ravens, um, Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Uh, and with him, like the Ravens, they are quietly um, loading up on, they got a lot of safeties. A lot of safeties. Um, they, of course, signed Marcus Williams. Um, they have Chuck Clark. They re-signed Tony Jefferson. Um, they brought back Geno Stone. They're going to be getting Ardarius Washington back, who broke his foot last year. Um, and... I'm missing some. Oh, Brandon Stevens. They got Brandon Stevens as well. Um, and I feel like I'm still missing somebody. But either way. Uh, so they, they they quietly got some nice little depth at, at safety. Now, um, even though they got all that depth there, uh, everybody's not a lock. Now, um, with Marcus Williams, obviously a lock. Chuck Clark, he's a lock. Brandon Stevens, he's a lock. Or Darius Washington, it's weird, but right now I actually feel like he's a lock. I do. Uh, he made the active roster last year, uh, and despite him breaking his foot, he's another one of those guys that I think the Ravens like really, really uh, value a lot. Um, and uh, there's been a lot of chatter. There have been a lot of chatter last year, uh, and then then there's been some chatter going into this upcoming season that he could possibly be an option for them at slot corner. Um, and so we'll see what happens with that. Now, Tony Jefferson, they brought him back. And, and uh, again, with these Ravens safeties, well, with Tony Jefferson and Geno Stone, um, don't burn your bridges. That's, that, that is something that you should take in life with you to not burn your bridges. In some cases, it can be a, really hard because people be trying you and you're like, man, but if you can maintain your composure, it, it can be a beautiful thing. And if you don't burn bridges, you, you just never know. You never know when things may come back around. You never know what opportunities could come from not burning bridges. You just you, you never know anything could possibly happen. Uh, so with Tony Jefferson, we remember um, he uh, against the Steelers, too, against the Steelers. I guess if you make a play against the Steelers and that ends up being the last game of your Raven career, then the Ravens will think about it. They'll be like, huh, you know what? We like that guy. We'll bring you back. 
Um, Because Tony Jefferson, he was making a play against the Steelers. That's when he tore his, I think it was an ACL Achilles. Um, Then the Ravens ended up cutting him. And then a couple years later, it comes full circle, and he's back on the squad. So and then with Geno Stone, he makes the pick against Big Ben. And Ravens like, hmm, should we tender him or no? Oh, uh, yeah, we'll do it. Okay, come on back. But, again, with him, they drafted him, cut him, brought him back. Um, so with him, uh, he's going to have to fight. Like, he, he, his deal is, like, super cheap. But still, um, the, Ra- the only locks I see as safety – uh, Brandon Stevens, who you know, like, he is going to be on that field, and you know he's going to be on that field. Um, and the thing with him, too, something that I think is going in his favor right now, and of course, we still got free agency, we still got the draft and whatnot, but something that's going in his favor right now, the Marcus Williams signing, that did not go in his favor, in my opinion. Obviously, because he was the Ravens starting free safety last at the end of last year, after they Deshaun Elliott went down again, um, and that ended his season. Uh, and then with Chuck Clark, he got that locked up over there. But as far as Brandon Stevens, what's going in his favor is the fact that the Ravens did cut a Tavon Young. Um, and Marlon Humphrey, they would probably, I think they would, whether they had Brandon Stevens in the slot a little bit or they had Marlon Humphrey, they kicked him back in there and had him in the slot. Uh, and Brandon Stevens on the outside with Marcus Peters. The fact that they don't really have corners like that, is, that's going in his favor. But, I mean, a lot of stuff is going to go in his favor because the Ravens love him with a passion. They love that dude so much, man. And, again, you can, you can tell. They love him and they value him. Uh, but Geno Stone, um, I would expect him to uh, really be on a lot of special teams. Um, pre- preseason is going to be so big, man, for a lot of these guys. Preseason is going to be huge uh, because that's the chance when a lot of depth guys have an opportunity to make it. Now, something that he's also going to have to watch out for um, is the draft. He was drafted by the Ravens. I think he was from Iowa, but he was drafted in, I want to say, the sixth round, I think. Um, But with Geno Stone, if the Ravens draft a safety. Now, I know a lot of people, when you talk about that, they're like, huh, drafting a safety? What? Why would we do that? We got Marcus Williams. We got uh, Chuck. We got safeties already. But... It's a possibility. Like, and I know a lot of people have talked about, what, what if Kyle Hamilton is sitting right there at 14? And a lot of people have called him a generational talent. Um, what, what if he's sitting right there at 14 and the Ravens are on the clock? Do the Ravens, are they like, mm, you know what, let's get another safety? Or do they trade back? What do they do? Um, and then, of course, there's a possibility for Justice Hill, his brother. Uh, I think it's, it's Daxton Hill. Um, but anyway, it's, it's, it's going to be some options out there uh, for the Ravens and, of course, guys that they could get in the later rounds. But if they draft a the safety, that impacts all those other safeties or well, most of the other safeties on the roster, uh, like a Tony Jefferson, like a Geno Stone, like an Ardarius Washington, possibly. So we'll see what happens with that. But this signing is, I mean, it's pretty much a no brainer. Uh, you want to go into the draft um, with as much depth as you can possibly have. Um, and right now, the Ravens as safety, hmm, I would probably say that's the position where they have the most depth on the roster. Because, yeah, the most depth on the roster. And the most health, too. Because... All those safeties last year were, for the most part, they were healthy. Um, the or the ones that they retained. Obviously, Sean Elliott went down and um, our Darius Washington went down. But going into this offseason, yeah, I say that's probably where they got the most depth at. Because it's not running back, it's not wide receiver, it ain't tight end, it ain't offensive line, it ain't it sure ain't defensive. <laughs> they still miss it like twenty defensive linemen, but it ain't linebacker. It's not definitely not cornerback. Um, so yeah. That's something right there. Uh, but, yeah, so Ravens, they, they staying all the way ready. Um, but anyway, so shout out to Geno Stone. Shout out to Ravens for uh, for making this happen. I um, mean, this is not one of those sexy signings or anything like that, but just some some more reinforcements. Uh, Geno Stone is somebody that he did start. He started the game against because it was a game where Chuck Clark was out with COVID and it was a game. What game was it? Was, but it was a game he started and he had the green dot. So he was the one that was uh, 
relaying the plays to everybody and whatnot. So, Geno Stone could do some stuff now. I feel like Geno Stone a little sleeper, man. He a little sleeper, and he just he just waiting for that opportunity. He waiting for that opportunity. So, in the Ravens' case, this is, hey, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. But in Geno Stone's case, he is one of those guys, again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Because they, they, they would not just give that green dot to anybody. They, they do not give it to just anybody. And they're not like, all right, here you go. You, you take it. Oh, no, okay, you take it. No, you, no, 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 no. That, that role is so important and it's so crucial and, and critical. It's, it's vital to have the right person that's calling the plays because that person, you have to have a lot of trust in that person. That person has to display a high level of leadership. Uh, that person has to know that stuff too. They have to know what they're talking about and know how to be a great communicator as well. Not everybody has those qualities. And, and if people don't, that's not necessarily a bad thing. They just don't have those qualities. It's okay. Not everybody's going to have great leadership skills. Not everybody's going to be a great communicator. Not everybody's going to be a, a great, uh, great at sending a message to everybody. Not everybody's going to be great at that. And that's fine. But if you have somebody that is like that, it's important that you hold on to them. And it's important that they know uh, how valuable they are as a person. Not only a person, but a player as well. Um, but person first and foremost. Uh, but I appreciate y'all. I value you all. Um, thank you for always watching the videos. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you that for 53,000. We have 53,000 subscribers. And that is um, a lot of y'all Looney Tunes for subscribing to this channel. Oh, boy. <laughs> y'all are crazy for real. But I love y'all. Um, appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all later on. And like Geno Stone won't be when it comes to being with the Ravens, I'm out.